It's pretty likely you've been enjoying our tour through the golden age of Hong Kong cinema, but you may be crying out for more detail as to what makes this cinema so unique compared to its Hollywood counterpart. No? Well, we've put together a three-point guide anyway. Jake on Film presents Hong Kong Cinema 101. Point one, no script. Most Hong Kong films of this era would start off with a concept and some set pieces, but no screenplay. For example, Jackie Chan wanted to make a film about the police in 1985. They included a set piece with a bus and a shopping mall. He tasked his regular writer, Edward Tang, to come up with a story that would get him to said mall. Dialogue and the nature of the scene would be decided on the day, often to the bemusement of Western actors such as Cynthia Rothrock. It also wouldn't matter about lines and language, as that would all be dubbed in post-production to save time. Of course, this has an effect on the overall film, feeding into our next point. Point two, tone. The tone or feel of a Hong Kong film can veer wildly from scene to scene. We are all used to mixes of genre like action comedies, but not to such an extreme extent. In The Odd Couple, Samo improvises a scene where he makes Dean Sheck swallow copious amounts of eggs. Yuck. Only a few scenes later, we have a dramatic and violent fight that leads to two of our protagonists dying. This happens regularly. Scenes of bawdy humour bounce against death and intense monologues. It can be jarring, but it sure is unique. Point three, the action. Of course, this is the strongest aspect of this type of filmmaking and what it's most famous for. But why is it so good? Action is given priority over everything else, with months being dedicated to one fight scene and the stuntmen are more willing to take risks and get hit for real. The most important aspect, however, is the experience of the choreographers and directors who have been working on fight scenes for decades. From traditional Kung Fu, to modern action. In the case of the Three Dragons, they develop timing and acrobatic movements through Peking Opera training, then combined it with martial arts techniques to create magic. As an example, let's compare Jean-Claude Van Damme's Lionheart with the end battle in Yen Bu's Righting Wrongs. Jean-Claude will usually perform one technique in one shot. On this occasion, a punch to the balls takes three shots. Then when he strikes, it cuts before he lands a blow. Yen Bu delivers six intricate techniques and we cut on the seventh. Cuts are still used to emphasize a blow or show a brutal technique, of course. Now we love Jean-Claude, and each technique does show off his muscles from Brussels. However, the speed and the rhythm in writing wrongs, and many other like it, is so exciting and detailed, it makes you want to watch the fight again and again. Which one do you prefer? We hope this adds a little flavor to our guide through a wonderful time in action filmmaking. See you for the next leg of the journey. If you're lost in the crazy ether that is the film universe, Jake on Film is here to give you a hand. Until next time, keep watching.